Hi everyone, I'm Susie Mills from Oxford HR, a leading global executive search firm for the for-purpose sector. Um, and today we're going to be having a chat with Amanda Bronkhurst, who is the founder of the not-for-profit initiative Just One Tree. Hi Amanda. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Morning, hi. Thanks for having a chat with us today. Um, so just to give a bit of background, Oxford HR came across um, Just One Tree through your schools initiative at the end of 2019, I think it was, and um, that we came across you. Um, and so it'd be great to understand a bit more about how you set up Just One Tree, what the inspiration was behind it, and, and really how it all came about. Uh, so, well, it was about a year ago, um, and uh, there were a few things that came into mind. So I had, I at the time had a, a two-year-old daughter. Um, I put my career on hold slightly because I worked in filming and we did really, really long hours, both me and my husband. So we thought, well, one of us has to be around while she's little. So we'll put my career on hold just until she starts school. Um, so I was at home looking after her while she was having a nap. I came across uh, Greta Thunberg's speech in the Houses of Parliament saying that we only had... 10 years left before we set up all these tipping points um, and also all the David Attenborough programs are coming out at the same time and it was just suddenly these little bits of awareness that kind of reached me and I always knew that climate change existed but I definitely thought it was a bit further down the road I never realized it was so pressing um, and I just actually panicked I think um, like any mother of a young child that's brought them into the world going what's what's the world going to be like when you're my age or beyond you know what's civilization going to be like is it going to exist and I thought well I do everything that I can I just felt so frustrated that the governments sort of felt like they were dragging their heels a bit um and I just thought I just well I just wanted to do something about it and then I discovered how cheap it was to plant a tree and I just kept thinking well I'd plant a tree for my daughter for a pound and I'm pretty sure every other parent would plant a tree if they knew for their kids future so I was sort of there at night looking up how many kids are there in education in the UK and there's 10 over 10 million so I thought well imagine if you did that 10 million trees once a year that would be a lot of carbon dioxide um, and then I kind of thought about what about my old industry which was filming what if every uh, production company planted a tree for each job? It might be 20 jobs a year. Um, and it's only a pound per job. But then what if the catering company planted one tree for the job that they were on that shoot? And the lighting company and the camera company and the editor and the post house. And so I suddenly thought, actually, that's quite a lot of trees per job. And you multiply that by all the productions that go on in a year. And that's a lot of trees. So I was sort of lying in bed with all this whirring around and I just thought if I don't do something about it, I'm just, well, no, I can't, there's nothing, I can't not do something about it. So um, I just did loads of research and just launched it and just, I couldn't, yeah, I just couldn't not do something about it. And I thought I've got a year till my daughter Senna goes to school anyway. So I'd have this time free. And if I plant 900 trees in that year, and that's as far as it goes, then that's 900 trees out there, more than there would have been if I hadn't done anything about it. So I just sort of went for it. And, and how, did you, how did you actually go about set, setting it up? So did you, so you're on return to leave anyway? Um, first I looked into the different sort of legal aspects of it, kind of whether a charity or a community interest company, and I got some advice to go down community interest company, limited by guarantee, which means um, it's similar to a charity structure in that there's, you know, there's no um, pro any profits or any pennies, or not really profits, goes back into social goods and it's an asset lock on the company. So it's not like I could sell it or anything like that. Um, and also it's very swift to set up because obviously 10 years, I didn't want to spend a year trying to get trustees on board. And I just wanted to get going and get planting. Mm -hmm. um, so that was that side of the company. And I did lots and lots of research into the reforestation companies, looking at the methodology, um, their impact on communities and the governance um, and about the trees themselves, what species, like that they plant native species, um, that they're cared for to maturity because there's no point in just planting trees and walking away because we all know they get eaten by animals or, or whatever and logging, illegal logging and things like that. So it was all about kind of finding the right partners to, to that I really trusted as well because um, obviously 
people donating their money to just one tree it's my responsibility to make sure that goes exactly where it's supposed to go and the trees are being planted and those trees are being monitored and the companies I'm planting with are being audited so um because it's a great that is the great responsibility kind of on my shoulders um so yeah and that's why I made form partnership with these these lovely companies um and then tested the water and set sail basically Yes, and so I wanted that was my next question actually is um is is how did you choose the locations and the companies you chose to work with um and what firstly where are they um for our for our audience and yeah. how did you choose those particular ones so these ones um well where we plant at the moment is Mozambique Madagascar Indonesia Nepal Kenya and Haiti um, and the main reason I chose there rather than the UK to start with is that there is scientific evidence to say that um, trees trap in heat. Um, so it's better for climate change to be planted closer to the equator rather than up in the northern hemisphere where it's supposed to be cooler. Um, also, obviously, a monetary thing. It's a lot. It's, you can plant a lot more trees for the same amount of money than you could here in the UK. Yeah. Um, I do hope to eventually plant here as well, but for me again, for that sort of urgency, I would much rather plant 10 trees in Madagascar than one tree in the UK because that's a lot more carbon dioxide being removed. So that was the main, the first kind of aspect. Was your, and also the fact that it's, it's lifting sort of communities that are struggling out of sort of out of poverty it's kind of helping them by giving them sustainable incomes and that was a big aspect as well um because part a lot of deforestation is because there are struggling families out there that are trying to make money quick money by chopping down trees um selling charcoal on the side of the road to to make a quick buck but actually although it's a short-term solution it's actually causing a long-term problem mm -hmm. so by giving sustainable incomes and training and agricultural education um, you're sort of preventing further deforestation and sort of reversing the effects as well. Um, and people thrive, you know, when the environment is lifted, people get lifted as well. You know, you see it through these different projects. So the social side as well, it has such a big impact in places we plant rather than say here in the, in the UK, but still need to plant trees here. I'm not saying we don't need to, but that's kind of why I wanted to focus um, in these areas. Great. Okay. Thank you. Um, and I know there's not a sort of simple sort of way of say, of explaining this process, but briefly, if you're able to, from the do, the process of someone donating a pound um, to plant a tree to actually the tree ended up being planted, um, and then the aftercare, like you mentioned earlier, what's yeah. the what's the process of that? Well, the general the general over sort of process is that the seedlings are found by the sort of local community members and then so there's two different methods i'll start with um there are the sort of inland trees which is done in the nursery so the seeds the local seeds are found um to ensure it's native species they're planted in the nurseries looked after cared for grown till seedlings or saplings and then they're um, transported to pre-prepared planting sites during the rainy season where they're then cared for and uh, maintained until maturity and also protected. So there's people sort of overseeing to protect against illegal logging in the future. Um, and then in terms of the mangroves, which we do also plant a lot of, I can come back to why, um, those are actually planted from proper gills, which are sort of, I don't know if you know, they're like, they're like this big, but they're like baby trees basically that's sort of, sort of dropped by the, original mangroves but they're actually perfectly like planted to ensure that they actually grow um, and the reason we so they can go directly into the ground rather than being prepped in nurseries mm -hmm. grown in nurseries um, and the reason we which is another reason why I chose one of these partners because um, mangroves can um, store up to four times more carbon dioxide per hectare than tropical based trees so although it's not essentially as romantic as a as a rainforest, they do actually do have, they are amazing carbon sinks, and um, they're like the biggest the principal store of blue carbon in marine ecosystems, and they clean the water and they look after the health of the local coral, and three quarters of fish, 
born to, of tropical fish are born amongst their roots right. and a big thing I'm just wondering is that you know about the trees and the atmosphere but a, a big thing for me is also the carbon um, and looking after the oceans so that's something that I want to concentrate on as well um, so mangroves do you at the heart of, of that looking after the, the, the health of the, the ecosystems on the coastal ecosystems Wow. Okay. That's a, yeah, that's a, and, and like you mentioned earlier, the, so the aftercare as well, um, of these trees is that how long are they looked after to what age do they grow and, or, or is it all their lives that they're sort of nurtured for? Well, for, for many years, for many years. And then, um, as I say, it, it depends, it varies from reforestation partner. Um, but one of the things that I sort of loved about one of them, I mean, the monitors we're using in, in the field and also, audited as well with site visits as well throughout the years um, but one of the stories that I love from Eden one of our reforestation partners is that they had um, they found so whilst they their trees were being watched they saw some loggers coming into their plots not plots but their forest trying to chop them down they caught the loggers illegal loggers um, and brought them back to the planting nurseries and instead of maybe perhaps what they were supposed to do was hand them over to the police, but then it just creates this cycle of, you know, negative cycle. And what they did is they brought them back, they showed them the process of planting these, what they're doing, why they're planting trees and taught them about it and showed them and then actually offered them jobs and gave them a livelihood, which was more than it would, would have been to cut down the trees. And now these, these loggers are now overseeing the trees and protecting them because also they know what to look out for from other illegal loggers um and i mean it's just an incredible uplifting that's story the most amazing story yeah that's yeah, really good. it's so and that's kind of one of the reasons i love this this reforestation company is their kind of methodology they're kind of employing to, you know to say it to plant employ to plant is what they're saying but so um and yeah it's just so yeah, you can see kind of through that that actually they're there to look after the trees to make sure that they survive as a forest. So uh, the key question, well, one of the key questions, how many how many trees have you planted to date? I know that with Oxford HR, so we started planting with you very beginning of 2020, so this year, and I think to date we've planted almost uh, 500 uh, with you. So how what's your what's your total looking like at the moment? We are over 400,000. 400,000. Wow. 400, <laughs> Yeah, um, because we plant a lot more per, although it's just one pound plants one tree, um, the costs vary per planting project. So what we do is we, we plant that first tree and anything left over we put into planting more trees. So, um, so each pound might plant one tree, two tree, five trees, but we, so um, we've actually planted over 400,000 and we've got more to come. Um, by the end of our first year, which is end of June. So very exciting. Oh, well, that's great work, well done. Um, and who's, uh, like I say, we're obviously working with you, and but you've got several partners you're working with now. And um, I just wanted to understand a bit more about how you're working with your partners. So I know from Oxford HR, who, as I mentioned, we're in executive search. So we, we place people in, um, in leadership roles. So for example, for every uh, CEO we place, we, um, we give you 25 pounds to plant 25 trees. And for anything, any role other than CEO, we plant 10. And then we've also committed to planting 25 trees a month ourselves. So we've got a kind of ongoing um, basis, but also a per role basis as well. But you've got several different partners you work with. And could you just give us an idea, my our audience, an idea of who they are and how you work with them as well? So um, I set up just one tree kind of as a, it sounds silly, but as a freelancer in filming, I, I always was a bit worried about sort of signing up to a regular, I mean, I did sort of sign up to regular charities, but there's only so much you can take on board because you don't know how much money, you know, you know, how long your jobs are going to last for. So I wanted something that was very flexible um, and moulded to every single business. Um, so, for example, you've chosen that way of kind of fitting it into Oxford HR, but other companies um so we've got some in the production industry that kind of plant a set amount of trees depending on their budget of the job uh what else we've got um uh we've got kind of eco companies so whenever they sell online companies where they sell products it's um, a tree per product or a tree or a couple of trees over orders of 
20, 25 pounds. Um, we have companies collecting um, donations in shops around there. Um, um, what else do we have? Come on, thinking because we've got 30 companies on board. I'm thinking what all the different plans <laughs> are. But it literally, some do a regular donation, a regular monthly um, setup, like yourselves. Um, so we've got structure engineering, we've got um, Jojo Mom and Bebe's clothing, the first one of the leading, and the B Corporation brand. Um, we've got uh, the world's leading, or oh no, the UK leading um, Cine Lab. Um, which are all the sort of film developments that goes on here in the UK. Um, yeah, we've got sort of a, a big array, what, 30 companies, to say, already on board and, and more signing up all the time. So. Well, that's amazing in, in such a short space of time. And, and I guess my sort of my fi final question, really, which leads on to that, is this, what are your sort of aims for the future? I mean, you mentioned that until Senna it goes to school, obviously, but there seems to have taken off more than you probably thought or even hoped it could do. So what, what are your sort of yeah. plans for the, for the future? Yeah, well, this is, running just one tree is a full-time job. Yeah, it sounds like it. <laughs> amazing, it, but it's a full-time job. So the um, we've got lots of plans for the future. Some of them I'll have to keep keep them on. Um, but uh, the first one is we're about to launch our second uh, school um, campaign, which is the first year was a non-uniform day, and it saw over 350 schools taking part. Um, and actually they raised, so far, there's still some... Uh, to take part still this year, but they've already raised over £75,000 for re reforesting of our planet. Um, so we're hoping to go bigger and better next year. We're about to launch our date of October 16th um, for that, 2020. <laughs> so get, get everyone get talking to your schools and try and convince, convince them to take part. Um, so yeah, so that's the school side and we want to try and get some more education materials um, to help schools as well to bring kind of climate awareness and in the importance of trees into schools um, and then it's growing the business side I think that would be a fantastic thing to grow the amount of partnerships we have and also we're going to be growing the whereabouts in the world we're planting kind of the reforestation projects that we're able to support so quite a few and a few other little things that I'm looking into it's all these little things you know I think what this has kind of shown me is you can have an idea um, and to really aim high because you never know what will ha what might happen and you know sort of coming up with that school's idea right at the beginning the school's campaign you know I mean for example I kind of said, thought well if we could get 20 schools on board that would be really great and suddenly we ended up with 350 and you know <laughs> so it was just it really took off and you know you kind of go well I'll plant nine I hope I'll plant 900 trees and that'll be done something good and it's sort of grown to 400,000 already so you just think well you have these ideas and these dreams of how the world could be and how you could get it you know how you could make it and I just think do it and go for it and see what happens so that's what I'm doing Try making the world a better place. <laughs> well, you've certainly, you're certainly making a very good, uh, very good start with that. I mean, yeah, congratulations on that. Many trees and your plans for the future sound really exciting. Um, but uh, I think, yeah, on that note, but well, thank you very much for talking to us today. I know our, our, um, our audience will be really interested to hear a bit more about Just One Tree. Um, and so, uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for talking to us. And um, we're very much looking forward to supporting you and seeing where you take it all in the future. And thank you for you guys, because your, your support has been absolutely wonderful and incredible. And it's been such an, an amazing partnership. So I'm, I'm totally in love with Oxford HR. <laughs>